From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Andy, I saw George Foley. I wasn't able to make him change his plea. Well, it was a good try, Johnny. Jury still out? Yeah. That means they're arguing all the technical evidence. I was just thinking. No one really believes we'll get Arnold Bennett. What do you think? I think we will. I know we will. Well, if we can get Foley, we can get Bennett. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, the uh, jury foreman just sent for the bailiff. I'll be right there. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Four State Fire Insurance Corporation, 4065 Spear Boulevard, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Bennett arson fraud. Expense account item 11, 10 cents, one phone call to the hospital. The report on Arnold Bennett substantiated the newspaper story that he was recovering from the gunshot wound inflicted by his niece. Well, one thing, Johnny, he'll be alive for us if we can go after him. Oh, I wish it had worked with Foley. I think I could have made it work if that lawyer Eggleston hadn't been there. Well, it's after four. You know, if that jury doesn't come in with a verdict pretty soon, they'll have to adjourn for the night. Yeah. Want to smoke? Yeah, thanks, Johnny. I would like one. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, they're coming back in. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Come on. Stuffy in this courtroom? Yeah. Excuse me. Court is now in session. <laughs> Be seated. <clears throat> Has the jury reached a verdict in the case of the state versus George Foley? We have, sir. Will you please read the verdict in this court? Wait. We, the jury, find the defendant, George Foley, guilty as charged. That does it. Dollar! Dollar! See me, Dollar! Come see me! I got some things to tell you now. Who's this with you, Dollar? Andy Cord with the insurance company. Now, look, I haven't got any deals to offer, Foley. You know that. Yeah, I know. So, so I took a chance. It's a lousy five more years. What about Arnold Bennett? Now, you're a little anxious. I want some information first. They only gave us ten minutes, Foley. Where's Bennett now? He's still in the hospital. He's going to be all right. He's out and I'm in. It's a break. Oh, come on, Foley. Let's have it if you have anything to say. Can you get Bennett? Can you really get him? I'll tell you frankly, we think we can get him with or without your help now. It doesn't make too much difference. Maybe it'll take longer without your help, but we'll get him. The fact that the court is going to convict you for having set fire to Bennett's office building is the lever we've needed. We can go after him now. Do you want to help us fully? I don't want to help you or your stinking insurance company, but I hate the idea, Bennett. Mr. Nolan do everything, running around, eating good food, and sleeping in his nice bed while I'm rotting away in prison. Sure, sure, he hired me to fire his building. He paid me 2500 bucks to put the torch to that lousy building of his. He said he could throw all the blame on a guy named Tony Midas if it ever came up. We want the facts, Foley. How'd he first contact you? Well, I, I got a friend who knows things, see? And my friend told me to contact him. When? A couple of days before the job. Come on, Foley, who's your friend? I'm going to tell you everything. Did you talk to Bennett in person about firing the building? I talked to him on the phone after my friend told me about him. Bennett said he wanted the place to go down because he's having money trouble, taxes and all. And he offered me a thousand bucks for the job. Now, wait a minute, Fuller. You just said you got 2500 I did. I did. I, I hung up on him when he offered me the thousand. I called him back later on and told him I wanted 4000 Well, we argued about it and then finally hit on the 2500 Did you meet him then? Sure. No. I never met him. I... 
I saw him once, and I walked by the building to look it over, but I never met him. Bennett's niece said she saw you two together, Foley, a sworn statement. Yeah, you know, she's a liar. How about the money? How'd he pay it to you? He left it for me in the check stand at the bus terminal over on 4th Street. I told him how to do that and when to leave it. Now, let me get this straight, Foley. You made the deal to fire the building over the phone, and you went ahead and looked at the job. You never talked to Bennett in person? That's right. And you made arrangements for him to pay you $2,500 by leaving it in the check stand at the bus terminal. Yeah, yeah. When did you make these arrangements? The day before the job. How'd you work it? I just told you. I mean the money. Oh, uh, half of it the first time, and after the job was over, he, he left the other half for me. And you got it all? Sure, sure, in cash. Why were you trying to see him in the hospital after he was shot? You try and shake him down for another five? Oh, brother. Come on, let's start over. Well, what do you mean? Oh, you're trying to sell us a bill of goods here. For what reason, I don't know, but I know this. You had to meet Bennett. You had to see him fully. You had to talk it over with him personally. I just told you I picked up the money in the bus time. I don't believe that. Bennett wouldn't have left the money for you to pick up. He could have just gone away with it. And after the building was burned, if it had been that way, Bennett didn't have to pay you the balance. Now, when did you see him? It's pretty important to know when and where and how many times you and Bennett got together. Thought you said you could get him whether I told you anything or not. We can, we can, brother. Don't ever doubt that. But if you tell us some facts, we can get him faster. All right, now. Where did you first meet him? Was it in a restaurant? Someplace with people around? No, no. Uh, I met him in his car. He, he was parked on Market Street near 5th. Uh, that's the way we arranged to meet each other over the phones. Did anybody see you meet him? People on the street, I guess. When did this meeting happen? The night I torched his building. He paid you then? Yeah. The whole 2500 Yeah, all of it. All What'd you do with the money? Never mind. Do you still have it? Never mind. Oh. This is a waste of time. You aren't telling us anything. Well, why should I? Well, why'd you call us here if you didn't have anything to say? Well, I'm saying something. You guys aren't listening. We continued questioning Foley about his association with Arnold Bennett. Each time he explained it, it was a different story. The only thing he admitted was that Bennett had hired him to fire the building. As far as the details of it were concerned, they were lost in a jumble of contradictory answers he gave us. Expense account item 12, $5.60, dinner for Andrew Cord and myself. The next morning, we return to the Hall of Justice to question George Foley once more. All right, Foley. Now, how much did you say Arnold Bennett paid you for the job? thousand dollars. You told us twenty five hundred one time. Another time you said five thousand. Now come on, what was it? Thousand dollars. And when did he pay you? Right after I fired the building. I met him right afterwards down on the street in his car. He asked me if it was all set and I told him to listen for the sirens. And pretty soon somebody put in the alarm and the fire engines come out. He paid me that all right. He, place was three quarters gone by that time. He knew I did a good job. Where was this you met him now? A couple of blocks in the building. Did anybody see you together? No. Where did you telephone him from? From my place. The same night you started the fire? Yeah, yeah. And he brought you the money that night, and you cased the building that night, and you started the fire. All, all this in one night. Now you got it. Now, that's the ticket, boy. It became increasingly evident that Foley was attempting to convince us that he was mentally deranged. In spite of the fact that he'd already been tried and found guilty and was slated to appear at 10.30 the following morning for sentencing. It's an old trick, and with arsonists, where sanity is questioned from the beginning, a good one. However, Foley had been examined by three psychiatrists appointed by the courts. I waited in the jail cell with Foley while Andy Cord went out to get copies of their findings. When he returned, we showed them to Foley. Okay, good. Here you are, John. Well, what are you showing me these things for? To let you know there's no way to get out of it now, Foley. These are from psychiatrists. All of them had a good look at you. You're sane. You're all right. You remember when they looked at you? No. All right, look at the dates on the paper. You can read, can't you? Sure. January 15th, January 16th, January 21st. Witnesses were around for all the examinations. Well? Well? Are you through playing games now? 
Okay, Dolly, you guys win. Come on, give us the story. Uh, I met Arnold Bennett at the Hopkins bar about a month before the fire. I made sure I'd meet him there. Now, what do you mean, Fully? Well, I've been setting fires for a living for a long time now. I always have a list of people like Bennett. If you use a fire, they get around. I knew he was in trouble four or five years ago with the income tax people. They sent a guy to prison for cover-up. Tony Midas. Yeah, it's Tony Midas. I figured he'd be needing another one pretty soon, so we had a drink. I brought it up. Who paid for the drinks? He did. Who saw you together? The bartender. His name is um, Alfred. There was a maid of deed there, a couple of people at the table. I put the proposition up to him. How'd he like to have his building burnt down and collect his $500,000 and get himself out of trouble? Well, he said he'd like that fine. I told him it cost him 5000 bucks in advance. He said he couldn't raise that much, but he did manage to get 3500 together. I took it, and I, I did the job. What'd you do with the money? I still got it. Where? It's not going to do me any good now. I buried it in a gallon can in a vacant lot over by the tower. I could show you where. Okay. We'll get you to do that. Swell, I'll be glad. Hey. What? I can send Bennett up the same way you're sending me up. Huh? I can testify against him at his trial. The next morning at 10.30, George Foley received the maximum sentence. Two hours later, charges were filed against Arnold Bennett, naming him for conspiracy, arson, attempted to fraud, and collusion. A warrant was issued for his immediate arrest, but it was never served. Arnold Bennett died in the hospital that night. In a way, you could still say that no one ever beat him. He beat himself. <laughs> Expense account item 13, $87.50, hotel and board in San Francisco. Item 14, another $125, transportation back to Hartford. Item 15, $35, miscellaneous. Expense account total... $1,440.37. Remarks? Nothing. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, the Phantom Five matter. Death. On the high seas. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Lillian Bayef, Stacey Harris, Chet Stratton, Will Wright, Marvin Miller, Hans Conried, Edgar Barrier, and Parley Bear. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking.